Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this series of videos, we'll be learning how to build a full featured web application using the Flask framework in Python. So Flask is an excellent micro framework that really makes it enjoyable to work with these backend web applications. And also at the time of this recording, they just released version 1.0 of the framework. So it's a great time to learn this. So first of all, let me show you what we'll be building in this series of videos, and then we'll get started learning how to actually put all this together. So this is the application that we'll be building in this series of videos. And you can see that it is a blog style of an application where different users can make uh, different posts. Now these can be regular blog posts or they can be you know, smaller like Twitter updates or whatever you wanna do with it. So let's go through a little tour of the features of this application. So we can see that we have a user management system so we can register new users. And once a new user is registered, we can go to login. And if they have forgot their password, then they can get a password reset email sent to their email address. So if we log in here, so I'll log in with the email address that I used uh, to sign up for the application here. And once I sign in, uh, at the top here, we can see that we have a few new options. So if I go to my account, then we can see the account information that we have here. We also have the ability to update uh, profile pictures to where we save pictures on the back end web application. So if we update that, then we can see that that changes there. And that picture also automatically gets resized to save space on our web server. So we also have the ability to write new posts here. If we go to the home page, uh, we can look at other people's posts. Or if we go to a post that we have written, then you can see that we can actually update and delete our post here. So if I update this post, then I can say my latest updated post and post that. If I go back to the home page, then we can see that that post was updated. And if I wanted to delete a post, then I could just come in and delete and delete. And we can see that that post is no longer there. So that's a quick tour of what we'll be building and building an application like this is a great way to learn the ins and outs of a framework because we're going to have to deal with uh, databases and also accepting user input from forms and saving pictures onto the back end uh, file system and sending emails and all kinds of different things. So we're really going to learn a lot about the framework by building this. Now, I'm going to mention this several times throughout the series, but if you're following along and would like to download the source code of each step in the process, then I will have links to the source code of each video in the description section below so that you can download that if you'd like. And also, if you'd like to know how to build this same website in another framework, then in the near future, I'm also going to be releasing a series showing how to build this same site in Django and on Pyramid and possibly other frameworks as well. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started learning how to build this using Flask. So I'm just gonna close out of this application and open up my terminal here. So first of all, let's start off by installing the packages that we need to get started out. So you can do this in a virtual environment or in your default Python environment, but it's always a good idea to separate different projects into their own virtual environments. Now I'm mainly going to focus on Flask in these videos. So if you need to install Python or wanna learn how to work with virtual environments or are wondering how I set up my text editor or anything like that, then I'm gonna put links to those videos in the description section below, but I'm not going to go into those in detail in this series. Uh, I'm just going to assume that you're specifically ready to start learning Flask. Okay, so first of all, let's install Flask. And to do this, we can do a simple pip install. So I'll say pip install Flask. And once that is installed, let's make sure that it installed correctly. So we can do that just by starting up our Python REPL here and then importing Flask. So if we say import Flask, if that doesn't give you an error, then uh, that installed correctly. So now we can exit out of that interpreter. And now let's create a new project from scratch. So I'm here on my desktop, but you can create this project anywhere you'd like. So I'm gonna create a new directory on my desktop. Uh, so within a Mac on my machine, this is gonna be uh, mkdir, and I'm just gonna call this uh, flask blog. Now on a Windows machine, uh, that is gonna be a different command, but you can just create the folder on your desktop like you would any other folder. And now I'm going to open up this new project directory in my text editor, and I'm going to be using Sublime Text, but you can use any editor that you'd like. So I'm going to open up Sublime Text, go to File, Open, and then open up this directory. Okay, so now we have a completely empty project. Now within our project directory here, I'm going to create a new file, and I'm going to call this flaskblog.py. And now we should be ready for a basic Flask application. So I have the Flask website pulled up here in my browser. So if I go to this, then 
if you go to the front page of their documentation, then they have about the simplest application that you can start with. So let's copy and paste this into our file and I'll explain what's going on. So I'm going to grab this code here and paste this into our Sublime application. I'm gonna make this text a little larger here. Okay, so at the top here, we're saying from Flask, import Flask. So we are importing this Flask class, and then we're creating this app variable and setting this uh, to an instance of this Flask class. Now passing in the double underscore name can seem a bit confusing. Double underscore name is a special variable in Python that is just the name of the module. Now if we run the script with Python directly, then double underscore name can be equal to double underscore main. And we'll see that in just a second. Basically, that is so Flask knows where to look for your templates and static files and things like that. So now we have an instantiated Flask application in this app variable. Now we can create our routes. So our routes are what we type into our browser to go to different pages. So for example, you've probably been to websites that have about pages and contact pages. And in Flask, we create these using route decorators. So decorators can be a confusing topic, but you don't really need to understand how they work in order to use Flask. So I would recommend learning at some point just because they're nice to know. But if you don't really understand them, then don't worry too much about it for this series. Basically, decorators are just a way to add additional functionality to existing functions. And in this case, this app.route decorator will handle all of the complicated backend stuff and simply allow us to write a function that returns the information that will be shown on our website for this specific route. So this forward slash here is just the root page of our website, or you can think of it as the home page. And we are simply returning the text, hello world. So this is normally where we'd want to return some HTML, but we'll start off with this uh, text just to make sure it all works. So when we start our application, if we navigate to our home page, then it should show us this text, hello world. So now let's run this so that you can see how this works. So I'm gonna pull back up my command line here. And now I'm going to navigate to my project directory. So I'm going to do a CD uh, flask blog and the CD command is the same on windows as well. And now we're in the same directory where that flask blog.py module lives. Now, before we run our application, we need to set an environment variable to the file that we want to be our flask application. So in my case, I can say export flask underscore app is equal to flask blog.py. Now that's the command that you use on Mac and Linux. If you are on Windows, then that is going to be equal to uh, set Flask app instead of export. So you can just run that. And now with that environment variable set, we should be able to run our Flask application just by saying Flask run. So if that worked and you don't have any errors, then you should see this message that says that it's serving your Flask app on 127.0.0.1. And this is the IP address of your local machine. And the 5000 here is the port number. Now this is a running web server. This actually comes with Flask itself. And you have to leave this running while you're viewing your site or else you won't be able to see it. So if I copy this address here, and go back to my web browser and paste this in, then we should see our sample application. Now this is a little small here, but we can see that we got the text, hello world. And that is what we returned from that home route. Now, when I said that this 127.0.0.1 was the IP address of our local machine, there's actually an alias for that IP address called localhost. And I like using that more than the IP address itself. So if I go back and paste in that URL again and replace this 127.0.0.1 with localhost and hit enter, then we can see that that returns the same route and gives us the same results. Okay, so now let's try to update our code to include some actual HTML. So I'm going to wrap our text here in H1 tags, which are heading tags. And this should make the text look a lot larger. So I'm gonna open up uh, our Flask blog and instead of returning just hello world, I'm going to wrap these in H1 tags, which are HTML uh, heading one tags. So we can close that out and save it. And if we go back to our browser and reload that page, then we can see that the changes did not take effect. So we actually need to stop the web server and then run it again. So I'm gonna pull up my command line here and stop this using control C 
and then rerun that with flask run again, and then go back to my web server, reload that page, then now we can see that those changes took effect and we now have our text and our H1 tags. And within Chrome and other browsers as well, you can view the source code of any HTML page just by right clicking and then going to view page source. And if I do that, then this is a little small here, but we have our text wrapped in H1 tags. Okay, so most likely when you're developing a site, you're going to be making a lot of changes to your application, and it would be a major pain to have to shut down and restart the web server each time you make a small change. And we can actually get around this and have the server show changes without restarting our application just by running our application in debug mode. So here is one way to do this. So if we stop our current application, so I'll pull up our terminal and hit Control C. Now I'm going to clear out the screen here. Then if we set another environment variable, so I'll say export, this one is called flask underscore debug. And I'm going to set that equal to one and hit enter. And remember on Windows, you use the word set instead of export for an environment variable. So now if we run this application, so I'm going to go back and do a flask run again. Then right away, we can see that there's some additional information here in debug mode that wasn't there before. So if I go back and refresh our page in the browser, then we can see that our application is still working. And now let me change some text in our code. So I'm going to go back and instead of this hello world, I'm instead going to change this to home page and save that. Now without restarting the web server like we did before, I'm just going to reload my browser. And you can see that since we're in debug mode, that those changes reloaded automatically and we didn't have to restart that web server like we did before. Okay, so I also wanted to show you that uh, if you don't want to work with those environment variables, then there's another way that we can run our application directly using Python. So let's go back to our application here. And to do this, let's go down to the bottom of the file. And we're going to want to put in a conditional that says if double underscore name is equal to, and in quotes here, double underscore main. And then within this conditional, we can say app dot run. And we run to run this in debug mode. So we'll say debug is equal to true. Now this conditional here can be confusing when you first see it. Uh, like I said before, the double underscore name is main if we run the script with Python directly. But if we import this module to somewhere else, then the name will be the name of our module. So this, condi this conditional is only true if we run this script directly. And I have a more detailed uh, video on this concept uh, if that's still confusing to you. So if we were to run this flaskblog.py module with Python, then it should come in here to this conditional and run this app.run statement. So let's do that now. So I'll pull up uh, the command line again. And I'm going to stop my server here and clear out this page. And now instead of doing flask run like we did before that uses the environment variables, we could instead just call this script directly with Python by saying Python and then flaskblog.py and run that directly. If we run that, we can see that we uh, get a similar output, it says that we're running on our local host in debug mode. So if we go back to our browser and refresh the page, then we can see that that's still working. Now running the module directly used to be how I always ran Flask applications, but now the Flask documentation uses the Flask run command. So I've been using that as well. Um, so the Flask command with the environment variables also allows us to use the Flask shell for some debugging. And we'll see a couple of examples of that in later videos. Now in this series, I probably will be running the application directly with Python, uh, just because I don't want to keep setting those environment variables again whenever I uh, shut down my terminal. Okay, so now that we have this running, now let's add another route so that we can see how easy this is using Flask. So let's add an about route to make an about page for our website. So if I try to navigate to an about page right now, so that would be forward slash about, if I go there, then we can see that we get this not found error. And if we look at our command line that was running the server, then we can see that we our last get request uh, returned a 404 response. And that 404 response means that the page doesn't exist. So let's create that now. So I'm going to open up uh, Sublime Text. And now I'm just going to copy and paste this homepage route here. And then change a couple 
of things here. So for the route, I'm going to say forward slash about. And we also have to change the function name here. So that's something that's easy to forget. Uh, so just be sure that you do that. And I'm just going to call that function about. And within here, instead of saying home page, I'm just going to say about page. So now we have a route at forward slash about, and this about function is returning the information for that page. And in this case, it's just an H1 heading with the text of about page. So let's see if this worked. So let's look at our command line to make sure the server is still running, and it is. So if we reload this page in the browser, then we can see we no longer get that 404 not found error, and instead it returns the about page text for our route. So now we have two routes here. We have this about page, and if I take that about away and just go back to our home page, then we can see that that route still exists as well. Now, if we ever wanted to have multiple routes handled by the same function, then it's as simple as just adding another decorator. So let's say that we wanted a route of forward slash home to go to our home page, uh, as well as just the forward slash. So I'm going to copy this and paste another decorator right below it and just say forward slash home. And I'm also going to change the function name here from hello to home. Then now if we pull back up our browser here and reload the home page, we can see that that still works. But also if we go to forward slash home, then that gives us the home page as well. So those two routes are being, being handled by the same function. Okay, so I think that is gonna do it for the first video. Now we know how to get a Flask application up and running and also how to create some basic routes. And in the next video, we'll learn how to return some more complicated HTML code using templates and also how to pass variables to our web page. But if you have any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest ways to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.